Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. These were the words coming out of a woman's mouth. A Catholic nun to be precise. Before we start today's episode, please do consider subscribing as that encourages us to generate more content for you. Hello everyone. Welcome or welcome back to Faith As This. I am Athena and I will be your host for today. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. These were the words coming out of a woman's mouth. A Catholic nun to be precise. Well, that's not very surprising because many Catholics, even non-Catholics and non-Christians use this name to express any emotion. But these weren't any emotions. These were the last words of her life as she was being stabbed repeatedly. 54 times to be precise. Being stabbed repeatedly by a complete stranger. But what had she done? What was her great sin that she had to pay for it with her life? Well, let us talk about it. In fact, let us start at the very beginning. Who was this woman? This woman was Rani Maria. Rani Maria was born in Kerala to Pai Lee and Eliswa Vattagil on 29th January 1954. Her birth name was Mary. She was the second child among seven siblings and her parents were farmers by profession. When she was in 12th grade, she got her call from God to embrace religious life. She was anxious to discuss this with her family as she was afraid of her family's reaction. However, some time later, she gathered the courage to tell them about this and just as Mary Konya, as was her pet name. As she had expected, her family was not too keen to let her embrace religious life. Her brothers and sisters strongly asked their father to not give her the permission to do so. However, her father said that if Mary wants to embrace religious life, then he was powerless. Finally, on the persuasion of Rani's grandmother, her family, family relented. Mary's youngest sister Celine would also follow the steps of her elder sister Mary and she too would join the same convent, the FCC congregation which Mary would join and she would take up religious life. She would take up the name Sister Selmy Paul. In the meantime, on 3rd July 1972, Mary left home for religious life. She was accompanied by her cousin Cecile, who had also received her calling from God. Both of them together joined the Franciscan Clarist congregation. Her cousin too would become a nun and she would embrace the name Sister Sony Maria FCC. During the years of her formation, Mary was described by her fellow aspirants as someone who was always smiling and never complained. She was also very smart as her fellow nuns would describe her. The young aspirants had to do all their work themselves, which included cleaning the house, the cattle sheds and bathrooms. Mary always volunteered to do this humble works and would continuously chant Jesus, Jesus while working. Mary was devoted to the name of Jesus, a devotion that would stay with her till her very last breath. On 1st May 1972, 1974, Mary took her primary vows and embraced the name Sister Rani Maria. Rani Maria which means Queen Mary, a tribute to the Blessed Mother of Jesus Christ. Sister Rani had a very strong desire to serve the poor in North India. Even during her formative years, she was strongly convinced that this was a mission. Shortly after taking her vows on 9th July 1975, she left for Patna for language training. India is a land of many languages. Sister Rani was from Kerala, which means that her mother tongue was Malayalam. The most prominent language in North India is Hindi. So Sister Rani would need to study the language to be able to serve them. 
Soon after her language training, she was appointed in Bijnor, that's a town in Uttar Pradesh. In Rani Maria's own words, she says, I was born and brought up as a missionary in Bijnor. Upon her arrival, Sister Rani was appointed as a teacher in the local St. Mary's school. For two years, she served as a teacher in the school, after which she engaged in social ministry. Social ministry was to do groundwork in the villages. She would reach out to every child, sick and old people and serve them. Parallelly, she also completed her studies in sociology. However, she never failed to work for the villagers. She would often say, I am willing to die for these people. Sister Rani Maria made a final profession on 22nd May 1980. Shortly afterward, in 1983, she was transferred to Satna, which is a district in Madhya Pradesh. She would serve in Satna for nine years and later, in 1992, she was transferred to Uddain Nagar in the district of Devas in Madhya Pradesh. Upon her arrival in Uddain Nagar, she observed that the poor of the society had fallen into the debt tra trap laid by the moneylenders. The people were unaware of their rights or of the government grants for socio-economic development. Through various programs, Sister Rani made them aware of their rights and they started freeing themselves from the bondage of the moneylenders. They started demanding for just wages. Sister Rani would often represent the needy in front of the government officials, bank managers and wherever else it was required. Slowly and gradually, she got the people of the land the financial assistance that they needed. This greatly displeased the rich in the society. She received multiple death threats from them. But Sister Rani was not, not afraid. She was not willing to stop. She said that she was happy to die as a martyr for, of Jesus Christ for the downtrodden. Finally, her enemies decided to get rid of her. For real. On the fateful day of 25th February, Sister Rani was planning to visit her family in Kerala. She woke up early in the morning and went to the chapel. After the daily mass and after having breakfast, she was to take a bus to Bhopal and from there continue her journey to Kerala. At that time, her sibling, Sister Selmi Paul, was stationed in Bhopal. After the mass, she was accompanied to the bus stop by her fellow nuns. And as they recall, they found a bus with the word couple written on its side and booked a ticket for Sister Rani and bade her farewell once she boarded the bus. The bus was to depart at 8.15 am. Among the 50 passengers on the bus were Jeevan Singh, Dharmendra and Samundar Singh, all three seated at different parts of the bus. Samundar Singh took his seat next to Sister Rani and immediately told her that he was aware of her plans to convert India to Christianity and that he would not let this happen. Sister Rani did not retaliate. Soon, the bus began its journey and had covered roughly 20 kilometers. Samandar arose from his seat, went over to the driver and asked him to stop the bus. He got off the bus and broke a coconut in front of the bus and coming back inside, started offering to everyone as a prasad. This is a custom in India. They break, we all break a coconut and when, whenever we begin an auspicious occasion. As he distributed the coconut, he offered some to Sister Rani, who took a piece and asked him, What is the auspicious occasion? At which he responded, I will let you know. And saying thus, he pulled out a knife and started stabbing her. He dragged her by her hair onto the road and continued stabbing her as, Je as Sister Rani kept screaming, Jesus, Jesus, in agony. Samandar Singh continued stabbing her until she was dead and then ran away into the forest. The passengers in the bus were numb with fear and some ran away. Some others informed the police. 
At 10.15 that day, the sisters of FCC were informed about the murder of Sister Rani. They had no means to transport and so got in touch with the bishop of the diocese, Bishop George. By 2 p.m. that day, Bishop and few other priests and some nuns of the congregation reached the spot of murder. They completed the formal paperwork and picked up the mortal remains of Sister Rani and laid it at the bishop's house. Sister Rani's sibling, Sister Selmi, and the rest of the family was given the news of her murder. Sister Selmi at that time was diagnosed with intestinal cancer and was almost bedridden. As soon as she heard of the news, she asked the Lord, Why not me first? Apart from the cancer, she was also suffering from malaria and jaundice and was sure that she did not have much time left. Un unfortunately for her, her elder sibling had to be called back home first. Sister Selmi was taken to the bishop's house on an ambulance and on that journey she was informed about the gruesome details of her sibling's murder. Upon arrival at the bishop's house, she saw her sibling's body and touched her wounds and wept. She was taken to another room by one of the nuns where she asked Jesus why he gave such a horrible death to Sister Rani. Sister Rani was left all alone at the moment of her death. It is then that Sister Selmi heard a voice that said, said She was not alone. I and my mother were there with her. At that very moment, Sister Selmi remembered her sibling's words that she would be happy to die for the downtrodden. And according to Sister Selmi, she experienced an unearthly peace. It was then she knew that in God's mercy, she would forgive her sibling's murderers. Amidst a flood of mourners, Sister Rani was laid to rest. The words from the Gospel of St. John Chapter 15, verses 13. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends have been inscribed on her tomb. Samandar Singh was a 28-year-old man who was hired by Jeevan Singh to murder Sister Rani. The third person on board the bus was Dharmendar, who was the bodyguard of Jeevan Singh. He was there only to fulfill his responsibility as a bodyguard in case something happened. After the murder of Sister Rani, Samandar hid in the forest but was arrested three days later. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison. He was arrested for the murder and he was the only person who was arrested. And though I did not find much evidence for this, I believe that it was because there was no evidence to link Jeevan and Dharmendra Singh with Samandar. And as the court proceedings go, circumstantial evidence does not count. So because of that, I think only Samandar was arrested. Samandar's wife left him while he was in prison and his son, his only son also died of a sickness. And Samandar was left in prison in misery and sadness. However, in 2002, Samandar's life changed in a way that he had never imagined. Father Michael, or Swami Sadanand, as uh, he's also called, fr from the CMI, that is the Carmelites of Mary Immaculate, a total stranger, expressed his desire to meet, meet Samandar in prison. Samandar knew that Swamiji, as he addressed Father Michael, or Swami Sadanand, was a Christian and he expected to be abused and cursed by Father Michael. However, Swamiji embraced Sadanand and said that God had forgiven him. Swamiji would continue and reach out and minister to him. One day, Father asked Samandar if he was willing to meet sister's family. Samandar was shocked and blatantly refused. However, Father did not give up and kept persuading him. Finally, after two months, Samandar relented. Father then reached out to Sister Selmi Paul. Sister Selmi had long forgiven Samandar and had desired to meet him in prison, but she had no means of transportation. 
when father michael reached out to her she gladly agreed after pondering over the situation both of them together decided that the best time for sister selmi to meet samandar would be on raksha bandhan so finally in 2002 in the month of august on raksha bandhan sister selmi visited samandar sister selmi recalls that samandar was overcome with guilt and he was shivering from head to toe when he met sister selmi he folded both his hands and apologized and asked for forgiveness sister selmi herself was very overwhelmed she kept on praying for him in her mind when she asked when he asked her for forgiveness he glad she gladly granted it and saying and after gra- granting him forgiveness she tied a rakhi on his right wrist in india that means that he was now her brother raksha bandhan in india is a sacred festival between the brother and the sister the sister ties a rakhi on the brother's wrist and the brother promises to take care of her to protect her forever in tying a rakhi to samandar singh sister selmi had not just forgiven him she had now accepted him as her own brother he was a part of sister family's now sister's family now and sister also gave him a packet of laddus which he distributed among the inmates they had only 5 minutes to meet and in these 5 minutes sister expressed her forgiveness and she had to come out of prison because of the time constraints swami sadanand himself had never known sister rani he had known about her he had not known her neither had he known samandar singh however when he heard about samandar he had the inner urge to minister to him which is why he used to go which is why he met him in prison and shared the gospel of jesus christ uh, sister rani's entire family had forgiven samandar by then and at the encouragement of sister selmi 8 months later sister rani's mother eliswa patel she too visited samandar in prison she visited him on 25th february 2003 that is the 8th death anniversary of sister rani she met him and expressed her forgiveness she was 88 year old old by then and not only did she forgive her daughter's murderer she also kissed both his hands she kissed the hands that that stabbed her daughter but sister rani's family did not stop here they expressed their desire to have his prison sentence reduced they consulted legal experts and appealed to the governor and the chief minister samandar's own blood relatives were not supportive of this but under the persuasion of sister rani's family they relented finally in august 2006 after serving 11 years in prison samandar was released sister selmi had once asked the regretful samandar what he would do if he was released from prison and he said that he would murder those who had instigated him for the murder and commit suicide sister selmi told him that since he had been forgiven by god he too should freely forgive those that had instigated him for this murder it was after this conversation with sister selmi samandar's regret turned into repentance this is a real life example of the truth expressed by saint paul in second in second letter to the corinthians chapter 7 verse 10 for godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret whereas the worldly grief produces death after coming out of prison samandar visited sister rani's family in kerala multiple times every time he was warmly welcomed and embraced by them samandar now lives on his ancestral land where he works as a farmer for a living he himself never converted to christianity but often visits the spot where he committed the murder and offers up prayers a memorial has been built on that spot where the words of the book of acts chapter 7 verse 60 have been engraved the last words of saint stephen lord do not hold this sin against them 
The process for Sister Rani's canonization began in 2003. Finally, on 4th November 2017, she was beatified, which means now she is Blessed Rani Maria and very soon we will be able to address her as Saint Rani Maria. Among the audience seated right next to Sister Selmi Paul was none other than Samandar Singh, smiling from ear to ear. She was always a saint, he said. Now she will officially be given the title as well. Sister Selmi Paul, who was diagnosed with cancer shortly before Sister Rani's murder, she says that Sister Rani often used to visit her and take care of her. She used to, Sister Rani used to tell Sister Selmi that her cancer would be cured. Sister Selmi would laugh at her siblings' words. And shortly after the murder of Sister Rani, Sister Selmi had a dream in which Sister Rani was beside her bed, nursing her, and there were other relatives too. In the dream, one of the relatives asked Sister Rani, Are all your wounds healed? At which Sister Rani replied, only one was left, and that too is now healed. At this moment, Sister Selmi woke up. She realized that the wound Sister Rani was talking about was her cancer, and she knew then that her cancer was healed. Sister Selmi's intestinal cancer remains. The cancerous lump is still inside her body, but it has not pained her or troubled her ever since. Sister Selmi has no personal thoughts about the canonization of a sibling. She says that the church will take its course. This is the story of Blessed Rani Maria and the story of her family and Samandar Singh as well. It was forgiveness, the teaching of Jesus Christ, that brought peace to this family. Let us all pray that we will be able to embrace servitude like Sister Blessed, like Blessed Rani Maria and forgive the way her family forgave. Let us end this episode with a prayer to Queen Mary, Mother Mary. Let us ask for her intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Amen.